Put your hands together, give him praise. You know, you belong to the winning team. When, when you go to a football park, you will see one team losing, another team winning. As long as your team is winning, you don't have to score a goal. As long as you belong to the winning team, you are a winner. You belong to a winning team. You know, Jesus is the winner man. Jesus is the winner man. The winner man. The winner man. Jesus is the winner man. The winner man all the time. You belong to the winning side. I am on the winning side. The winning side all the time. You don't have to feel like you are winning. You will be going through it. Your faith is under attack. Your faith is under fire, but you are still on the winning side. You are still with the winning team, even though you've never scored a goal before. You haven't blocked the ball before, but as long as your team is winning, you are on the winning side. You are with the winning team. Put your hands together and give God praise. Thank God for being on the winning side. There are two kinds of lions in the Bible. There's a physical lion known as the king of the forest or the jungle king. But there's a spiritual lion who is known and called the lion of the tribe of Judah. And Judah means praise. So there is a tribe of praise. And our lion roars when we praise him. Is there anybody here who belongs to the tribe of Judah? Hallelujah. With your hands lifted up. All across the nation, say in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, once again, we've come on this blessed Sunday morning at your feet to receive light, illumination, clarity, revelation, understanding to make sense of the unanswered questions on all of our minds, all across the nations. In the name of Jesus, we lift the veil. We remove the veil of your church and your people. We break the veil. We destroy the limits. We lift the sanctions. The adversary has placed on your church, on the faith of your people. Let the sanctions be lifted. Let demonic sanctions be removed of us. We reverse demonic verdicts against your people, your house, in the name of Jesus. Let the verdicts of the enemy be reversed, be lifted off us right now and declare that the enemy will not exact on your people nor afflict us anymore. In the name of Jesus, right now, we intercept internal storms, whirlwinds, right now, as we put our hands together in the name of Jesus, we intercept internal storms, family storms, any form of whirlwind, be lifted, be lifted, sanctions removed, veils broken, the power of grief destroyed of us, 
In the name of Jesus, the enemy will not grieve us. He will not grieve your house. He will not grieve your children. Nor afflict us in the name of Jesus. I thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in heavenly places. Thanks for joining, coming. Wherever you are, whoever you are, reach out, text friends, text loved ones. Tell them it's time to feed your faith and starve your fears and starve your doubt. It's good to see you again. And irrespective of what you're dealing with, what you're going through, I still want to assure you that God is still faithful. Faithful is he that has promised, and he also will do it. I was telling them at the first service that in 2015, I was having a prayer summit in Maryland, Baltimore. And just around the time the summit was coming on, we have titled the summit, been doing it in America for 10 years, we've titled it Prayer Works. And at that very time, the enemy threw something at me, and it was strong. And then the enemy said to me, are you still going to have the prayer works? You have to change the talk. You have to change the title. Change it to prayer may work. Or prayer works something. Change the title because what you are dealing with contradicts the title. You can't say prayer works when you are dealing with what you are dealing with. And it was in my flesh. I could feel the bone. It was a torn. It was hurting. I was grieving. I was bleeding. I was hemorrhaging. You could feel blood all around me. And I was still carrying prayer works. And, and some of the folks said, Papa, can we change the title? Prayer works. The greatest weapon the enemy thro throws, throws at you and I, ladies and gentlemen, is the weapon of shame. Embarrassment, reproach, nakedness, public ridicule, people's perception about you. They said to Jesus, if thou be the son of God, you save others. Come down from the cross, save yourself. Physician, heal thyself. You heal others, now it's time to heal yourself. Every now and then, every one of us will face a time and a season and a moment in all of our lives. When the enemy will throw things at you and your faith will come under fire. Your faith in God will come under attack to see whether you truly believe what you believe or not. And I said, we'll maintain the title Prayer Still Works. Prayer Still Works. It doesn't matter what. Prayer Still Works. Faith Still Works. Love Still Works. Forgiveness still works. Obedience still works. Put your hands together and shout yes. The fact that my prayers didn't happen the way I expected it to happen don't mean that prayer don't work. So I said, still maintain the title. Prayer still works irrespective. Modula Magido Agazas. Yes, 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 yes. Prayer still works. Jesus did not utter a word. He didn't say anything. He didn't explain himself. He didn't defend himself. I hear things all the time. People say, Papa, Papa, have you seen this on the internet? They are saying this. And I said, you know what? A servant is not greater than his master. I said, they said Mary Mandaline was Jesus' girl's friend. They even have a movie they've made on Jesus after 2,000 years that he had kids with Mary Mandaline. And I say, you know something? I am not greater than my master. And they can say whatever they want to say. I have no explanation and I have no words to give to anybody. I don't answer to anybody but the Lord. And it's just a matter of time. Those who are pointing finger, those who are pointing finger must understand that when you point one finger, Three is point, four is pointing back at you. So it's just a matter of time. And the Bible says, judge not that you may not be judged. I am not in the business of judging anybody. But in the business of serving God. Today, I just want to talk to you from my heart, if I may. 
And I want to say to you, have faith in God. Have faith. Have faith in God. Mark eleven twenty two. Mark eleven twenty two. We live in a time and a day in the history of humanity when the adversary is throwing everything, throwing everything on the children of light. And there is only one thing he wants from us, our faith. It's not, a, it's not about our loved ones. He's not interested in your kids, nor in our wives, nor in our children, nor in our husbands. He wants our faith because if you lose your faith, you've lost everything. As long as you have faith in God, as long as you keep the faith, you maintain the faith in God, you will bounce back. You will always come back again. Are you hearing me, somebody? David said, he restored my soul. He restored my soul. Hey, there is a restoration. There is a comeback. As long as we maintain our faith in God, there will always be a comeback. If you believe there is a comeback, put your hands together. Child, yes. Yes, yes, yes. There is a comeback. It's just a matter of time. There is a comeback. Job said the other day, he said that when he has tried me, when he's tried me in the fire, I will come forth as gold. I come forth because gold is not gold unless it's tested by fire. And sometimes God will test, allow our faith to be tested. When he told Abraham, give me thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou loveth. For Abraham, he believed God meant but for God, he was testing Abraham. He said, Abraham, I want to show you the difference between the provision and the provider. I want to draw the line between the provision and the provider. I want to bring you to a place where you don't depend on the provision, but you depend on the provider. I want to bring you to a place where your faith is not in the creation, but in the creator. I want to bring you to a place where you trust in the healer and not the healing. The problem with all of us is we begin, we begin with faith. Faith. Faith in, in God. Faith in the provider. But when provision comes, we, we walk away from the provider and we lean and depend on the provision. Provision depletes, but the provider never depletes. Let's stay with God. What the enemy is interested in is your faith. That is what he wants. That was what he wanted of Job. Yeah. The devil went to God. And the interesting thing, which all of us must be careful of, including myself and everyone in authority or has power and influence, is be careful that people don't manipulate you and use you and move you to use your influence, your power, your authority, or your wealth against innocent people. The thing that amazed me was when God said to the devil, though you move or provoke me to destroy Job without a reason. And I've come to the realization over the years, I began preaching at the age of 20. This year, by God's grace, I'll be preaching for 45 years. And I've seen the enemy play a lot of games. And one of the games he plays is he will always position people around you to manipulate you, to provoke you, to move you, to destroy others. And I've seen it happen to me over the years in ministry and in politics. I remember one time Dr. Morris Rello, one of my fathers in the faith was coming to see me and people went to America and told him all kinds of things about me in those days and told him, don't go to that Duncan Williams guy. He's dead, he's that, he's that. So we had a meeting and he called me and he said, son, what's going on? I'm hearing all kinds of things. And I said, Papa, you know better than I. You've been in ministry for 65 years and you know what the devil does and what people do. Satan is doing his business. And I said, but you, got to, you have to descend. You have to check it out for yourself and you have to decide what to do. And he told the guy who was planning the program, Paul, he said, we are going with Duncan Williams. And it was the most successful meeting they ever had here in Ghana. But before then, people went out there to slander me, say all kinds of things about me. And I said, Papa, I don't have any explanation. I have nothing to say. You, you, you have to make the decision. You got to check it out for yourself. And, and the enemy, that is him there. That is Papa with me out there. You know, the enemy is so good. 
He's so good to slander the accuser of the brethren. You are either an accuser or an intercessor. Satan is so good at accusing, undermining, and to slander others, innocent people. I'm telling you. There was a time there was a president in this country, myself and some men of God from outside came. We went to visit him and he was very hostile towards me. Sweet and nice to everybody else. Very hostile towards me. Didn't even acknowledge him, me. And this is a guy that I prayed for many years. Even when he was in opposition, prayed for him. Come visit me many times. Were that close, visit me and all that. He was so hostile. And after, when we're leaving his office, every, I, I allow everybody to go. And I cornered him. And I said, Mr. President, what's going on here? I said, Mr. President, I didn't even allow security. I said, Mr. President, something is wrong. What's happening? I don't like your countenance towards me. And I said, something is not right. He said, you are right about it. I'm very upset with you. And I said, talk to me, Mr. President. If you're upset, talk. And he told me, and I found out that somebody that was so very close to me in my church went to slander me, went to lie, and said I was praying for the then opposition. And I said, Mr. President, it is true. I pray for the opposition and I pray for government. What is wrong? I said, I prayed for you when you were in opposition. So why are you angry with me? <laughs> Yeah, it's the truth. I pray for government. I pray for opposition. That's what the Bible said we should do. First Timothy 2. First Timothy chapter 2, from verse 1 going down to verse 4. And I said, yes, it's true. I pray for the opposition. Just as I pray for you when you were in opposition. So what's your problem? He said, you know something? You're right. You're right. I said, Mr. President, you're better than this. And I walked off. I just walked off. I exalt therefore that first of all supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, irrespective of their religious background. For kings, for all that are in authority. And if we do that, we will live a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. That is the only way godliness and honesty and peace of any country is maintained when prayers go up for those in authority. Not when we criticize them, for it is written, speak no evil of the ruler of my people. The Bible didn't call us to speak evil of rulers. He didn't call us to criticize people in authority, but he said, pray for them. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Are you hearing me? Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That is the God we serve. We are not anointed to attack and criticize people in authority. That's not my assignment. The pulpit is not to attack leaders or to criticize leaders. It's to pray. And if you believe in God, then pray. Amen. Come with me, please. To Luke chapter 21, verse 26. Luke 21, 26. Thank you. Men's hearts failing them for uh -huh, fear. Uh-huh. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Uh -huh. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Even the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And he said, man's heart failing them for fear. For fear. There's fear. There's fear. And fear is a spirit. There's a spirit of fear released against the children of light. And it's against our faith. To cause us to doubt everything we believe. And we stand for, and we know. To begin to question the integrity of God's word. To begin to say, does the word of God works? Yes, it works. Yes, it does. Job 13, 15. Job 13, 15. Job 13, 15. I don't know what you're dealing with, but the enemy wants your faith. Go ahead. Though he, Though he slay, slay me, uh -huh. yet will I trust in him. Uh -huh. But I will maintain my own ways before him. I will maintain my ways before him. Keep faith in God. Don't lose your faith in God. Because if you lose it, you have nothing. You see, here was Job. He lost 10 of his children. One day, he went to bed, financial mogul, a father of 10. Woke up broke, lost everything, bankrupt, and lost seven sons and three daughters one day. 
And for nine months, he cursed the day he was born. He complained about everything. He stopped praying. Somebody said, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. Hear me. There's always a prayer you haven't yet prayed. If you think you prayed, I dare you, there is, there is one more prayer. There is a prayer you haven't yet prayed. And for nine months, Job complained about everything. He stopped praying because there come a time when you question your own faith. I'm telling you, 2015, I said, God, what's going on here? Why this? Why that? And demons began to speak and whisper. Change the title of the program. Don't use prayer works. Because it's prayer works. How do you explain what you are dealing with? Tell us. Give us some explanation. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Go ahead. My faith has found a resting place, not in device or creed. I trust the ever-living one, his words for me shall It is enough that Jesus died for me, shed his blood. I need no other argument. I owe you no explanation whatsoever. I have no answers for anything. There come a time and a day where you just have to keep your peace. Stand your ground. Hold your grounds. Keep faith in God and let God be God. Psalm 131 verse 1. Psalm 131 verse 1. Lord, my heart is not haughty. Yes, yes. Nor yes. mine ears lofty, my uh -huh. eyes lofty. Uh -huh. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters uh -huh. or in things too high for me. Hear me. There are things too high for you and I. I began preaching at the age of 20. I've been preaching up to this year for 45 years. And there are matters that are still too high for me. Yeah. It's not everything I try to exercise myself in. There are some things I don't touch it. I walk away from it. And I said, God, it's only time. 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 Time has a way of explaining things we can't understand right now. And I know that by and by, when we see Jesus, we'll understand better. There's a song that when we started, we used to sing at SU. By and by. Do you know the song? We will understand it better by and by. Yeah, by and by. There are things we'll understand better by and by. When I was growing up as a kid, my dad used to say, son, I have things to tell you, but you can't handle it now. And I used to say, dad, just tell me. I need to know. He said, you can't handle it. Yeah, you grow. You grow to a point of understanding. But right now, if I tell you, you can't handle it. You can't deal with it. Yeah. And Job, Job, for nine months, he grieved. He had negative emotions, roller coaster emotions. But one thing he did not do, he didn't curse God. He didn't doubt his faith in God. He said, though, even if God slays me, even if God is responsible for this grief and pain and adversity that has come my way, yet I will not doubt him. I will still maintain faith in God. Where is your faith? Don't let anything take 
your faith from you. Because when you lose your faith, that's you. That's the end of you. You have nothing when you lose your faith. For the Bible said, watch this. He said, for without faith, it's impossible to please God. You can't please him. But as long as you have faith, no matter what you encounter, you will still be pleasing in his sight. And look at the scripture carefully. If you look at it, Hebrews 6. Hebrew, Hebrews 11. And listen to what he said. He said, he that comes to God. He that comes to God must believe. Must believe that he is. Must believe. Not must doubt. Not must question God's integrity or God's word. But must believe that God is. And that is a rewarder. Of a rewarder. Of, of them, them that, that diligently seek him. seek him. A rewarder. God is a rewarder. I proclaim that if you maintain your faith, you will receive your reward. The Bible said, cast not therefore away your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward. The Bible said, if you faint not, you shall reap. If you faint not, you shall reap. When the enemy attacks your faith, and you compromise and give in to the fiery darts and you be, of the enemy, and you begin to doubt the integrity of God's word and question the scriptures, you are finished. I'm telling you. He wants us to doubt everything that has brought us that far. He wants us to doubt everything that has made us who we are. But we refuse to doubt God. We refuse to question the word of God. We refuse to blame God. We will not doubt him. Job did everything, but he won't curse God. Then there was one thing he, he never did. He stopped praying. He stopped praying. There come a time when the devil will tell you, stop all this prayer, 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 prayer. All this prayer. You see, you see, prayer is the highest expression of faith. So when you lose your faith, you stop praying. When you see people, stop praying. When you see somebody who used to pray and they stop praying, it's a problem of faith. Yeah. Their faith is diminishing. Their faith is going down. He lost everything. And he lost even his friends. And every now and then when a leader or a believer goes through challenges and adversities and crises of life, the first thing we do is confess. What is it that you've done wrong? And the Bible said that Job was the righteous man on the earth. He was the most righteous man on the earth. There was no man righteous like Job. And yet, and yet, and yet, he was not spared. He had to go through a test. Hear me? It doesn't matter how brilliant you are, how much you're on top of your class, you still have to go through examination. And hear me? Whether you pass the exams or not has everything to do with what you do, with what you were taught, and what you've learned before the exam day. And when things hit us, God is telling us, go back to everything I've taught you. Go back to the word. The shield of faith. The shield of faith. To quench the fiery darts. He will throw things at us. My faith has come under so much fire. My God, over these few years, months and weeks, there were days when I walked with tears flowing my eye. And I couldn't hold it. I couldn't control it. And I wasn't trying. The tears were flowing. And I was trying to stop the tears. And it wouldn't stop. And it kept flowing. And I'll come and preach and bless people. And I'll go home crying. Because of unanswered questions. I'm trying to make sense of things. And I say, God, but you said this. But the word said this. So why is this? And there is silence. I don't hear anything. It's like, I don't owe you any explanation. You either believe or you don't believe. You either believe that I'm God and I'm faithful and I'll do what I said and I will honor my word and I'll fulfill my promise. You either believe what I told you yesterday or you don't believe. Stop coming to ask me, am I sure of what I said? Don't ask me anything. Paul went to God three times and he said, take away this thorn in my flesh. Three times he prayed and the Lord said to him, Paul, you have enough grace to deal with this. Don't come here again 
and talk to me about this situation. You have the capability. I've given you enough grace. You will finish your course and your race with or without this stone. You will finish your course. Fight the good fight of faith. And Paul at the end said, I finished my course. I fought the fight of faith. I've kept the faith. Tell somebody, keep the faith. You know, Job did everything, but one thing he didn't do, he didn't do one thing, he didn't pray for his friends. You see, these were the friends that betrayed him. These were the friends that slandered him. These were the friends who turned on him. These were the friends who misunderstood him. These were the friends who betrayed his confidence. These were the friends that spread all kinds of speculations and lies about him. And the Bible said that Job prayed not for himself. Look at it, Job 42 verse 10. He didn't pray for himself. He prayed for his friends. He prayed for his friends. What did he do? He prayed for others. He interceded for others, not for himself. Even though he was bleeding and hemorrhaging, he came to the place of understanding that this is not about me anymore. Let me pray for others. And it was when he prayed for others, God said, now you've come of age. Now that I see that there is no bitterness in you, now that I see you're not angry, now that I see you are not upset with those who have offended you and wronged you. Now that you've come of age and there is no bitterness, unforgiveness and pain and resentment in you towards your friends, I will turn your captivity around. Look at Job 42.10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job mm -hmm. when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. You see, God turned it. You know why it was turned? Because he didn't lose his faith. Faith will always come back. Faith will always bring about restoration. He kept his faith. He maintained his faith in God. And God said, because you trusted me, even in difficult, trying times, and you passed the test, I will give you twice as much as you had before. He lost 10 children, seven sons, three girls, and God gave him back 10. He didn't give him 20 kids. That would have been too much to carry. And he didn't give him two wives because the wife didn't die. Tell to someone say, my wife will not die. Yeah. God said, with everything Job is going through, at least I'll preserve the wife for some comfort. I mean, amen. And God gave him twice because he didn't lose his faith. David lost four of his kids but still maintained faith in God. He didn't lose his faith. He still believed God irrespective. He believed God. And years after, they call Jesus the son of David. Jesus the son of David. They didn't say the son of Abraham or the son of Isaac or the son of Jacob. They said the son of David. Even though he lost 10 kids, he still believed God. I was in mission to London some years ago when the news came that Dr. Morris Rello has lost his son. He had taken his life and lost it. And he didn't cancel the meeting. We went on, he flew to the US, buried the son and came back to mission to London to finish the meeting. And I was sitting there, a young preacher, and I watched him the way he preached. And I said, what manner of man is this? What makes a man, what makes a man kick like this? What makes a man so annoying that in the face of adversities of life, he stands strong? And I learned a lesson and I said to myself, young preacher, learn, learn fast. And then T.L. Osborne, when I went into heaven, they showed me the city of T.L. Osborne. They said, that is the city, not the mansion, but the city of T.L. Osborne. That is me and T.L. Osborne, my grandfather in the faith. When he came to Ghana, he was praying for me before he left. And this was the last time I saw him. After this, he never came back again and he passed and went to eternity. And they said, that is the city of T.L. Osborne. And I said, that is my grandfather in the faith. He lost his only son. His only son. 
who should have inherited him, he lost him. And he still preached. At this time, that is Oral Robert. Lost a lot of his son. That is Oral Robert, the wife, myself. Years ago, at the airport, they came to church here. That, that is me. That is his wife. And that is Oral Roberts. Hear me, church? These fathers went through it. What is it that you've been through? How come you are doubting the word of God and questioning the faith and questioning your faith and doubting the scriptures? You have no right to doubt the word. You don't have any choice. There's no other way. There's no other alternative. It's either God or nothing. You either believe or you don't believe. There's no middle ground. Somebody say all things are possible. Talk to me. Say all things are possible. Come on, somebody say all things are possible. Say it. Say all things are possible. Come on, say it. Say it. All things. All things are possible. Say all things are possible to him that believes. Sometime, sometime Rosa will say to me, I don't know how you do it. And Bishop Oboda, I sometimes know what I deal with. I'll be going through it. And Sunday morning I come here and I preach out my heart and I bless everybody. And I go back with tears in my eyes. And I say, God, when? Because I wasn't called to come and preach my pain. I was called to preach the word. And woe is me if I preach not the word. I have no other choice but to preach the word of God. And I can't allow my personal test and adversity to stand in the way of the word and in the way of your blessing. Are you hearing me? Somebody say, I hear you. Because Job didn't give up on his faith and he maintained his faith in God. Something turned when he prayed for others. When you're going through it, pray for others. When you are in pain, pray for others. When you are misrepresented, pray for them. You know, that's what Jesus did on the cross. When they criticized him, and they said, if thou be the son of God, come down this time around. Prove that you are the son of God. Hear me? Every now and then, situations will come up that will demand for you to explain yourself and to justify yourself, to say something. You have nothing to explain. You have nothing to say. No comment. I was in London a few days ago and somebody called me and said, Papa, what do you have to say about this thing we are hearing? And I said, no comment. No comment. No comment. I understand that I don't understand. And I don't exercise myself in matters that are above me. I have no comment. I'm not going to try to explain anything. No comment, period. No comment. And I called one of my children and I said, if anybody asks you anything about this matter, say no comment. And when Job prayed, look at, look, at the look at the 12th and the 13th verse of Job 10. Look at it. Job 42. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Can I prophesy to somebody that your ladder will be greater than your past? Can I prophesy to somebody that your tomorrow will be better than your today. Oh, your ladder will be better and greater. Tell somebody, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. I might be going through now like a woman pregnant. I'm carrying this baby and this pregnancy is tough. It's a very complicated pregnancy. I, I, I feel some way. I can't sleep and lie on my back or on my side. It's very uncomfortable. Sometimes I learn women even have taste to eat dust. Dust. They have this strong desire to eat dust. They go through things they can't explain because of what they're carrying. You can't force it to come. You just got to endure. Today we don't know anything about long sufferings. Not just patient. Long world. Suffering. You talk about learning long suffering. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm learning long suffering each day. Each day, I'm learning it. I'm learning long suffering by the things going on all around me. I have to learn long suffering. 
when I can't make sense of certain situations, I have to learn to endure. For he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Today we don't know anything about endurance and long suffering. We want answers for everything. God doesn't owe us any answers. And you know something? I said the other day, I have a lot of questions on my mind for the Lord Jesus. And the day I see him on the other side, when he comes again, I will ask him some things. Not right now. Right now, I'm just going to endure it. I'm going to walk through it, and I'm going to believe until I see him. And the day I see him, I will say, Lord, Lord, help me. Help me make sense of this and that. Why this and that? And I believe I will understand by and by. But until then, I'm going to keep my faith alive. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep trusting him. Look at the 13th verse of Joseph 42. He had also seven sons and three daughters. Uh -huh. God gave it back to him. Look at, I think we've seen the 15th verse, eh? I think that is it. Yeah, 14. Yeah. Describe the children. Uh huh, 14, yeah. Go ahead. 14. All right. Keeping too much of time, we can leave it and move on. Hallelujah. Go to Ephesians 6 18. But realize that the change and the turnaround came when he prayed for others. Sometimes it's so hard, it's so difficult for. For us to pray for others and to pray for the children of others and to pray when we are going through it and to pray for those who use us, exploit us. They exploit, they use us emotionally, they manipulate us, use us emotionally, mentally, financially, taking advantage of us. Yeah, yeah, Job prayed for them. Job interceded for them and because he didn't hold it against them, because he, he wasn't bitter. Because he wasn't bitter and offended and hurt. But he prayed. There was no resentment in him towards them. He just prayed for them. The Bible didn't tell us the kind of prayer he prayed. But he prayed for others. And it was then God turned the circumstances and the tables in his favor. God stepped into the equation and said, now you've come of age. Now I can trust you. What you've lost, you can have it back. I declare that every grounds you have lost, you are recovering it in the name of Jesus. Every ground lost to the enemy, you are recovering it financially, spiritually, emotionally, in the name of Jesus. Every ground lost is being recovered. If you believe it, put your hands together and say yes. I declare a recovery, a recovery of wasted years. A recovery of stolen goods. Right now, put your hands together. Command a recovery of wasted years. Stolen goods. Stolen goods. Wasted years. Lost opportunity. Lost opportunity. No more foolish errands. Any grounds lost. Any goods lost to the adversary is being recovered on the account of the blood of Jesus. Favors lost. Opportunity lost. Are being recovered right now. Stolen goods are being recovered right now. Joy and peace and happiness, loss, are being recovered right now on the account of the blood of Jesus. Say yes. Go ahead. Job 42, 15 said, And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. That is Job 42. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. Job 42, 15. 15, look at 15. Uh-huh, go ahead. And in all, and in all land. the land where no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them an inheritance among the brethren. He lost them, but he didn't lose his faith. Tell somebody, no matter what you're going through, don't lose your faith. Yeah, yeah. L listen, go to Luke 18. Eh? Go to Luke 18. Go to Luke 18. Look at something. Look at Luke 18.1. And then come to Luke 18.8. Uh -huh. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that yes. men ought always to pray and not to faint. To pray every now and then? No, sir. To pray when they feel like praying? No, sir. To pray when everything is okay? But to pray? Always. To pray? Always. To pray? Always. To pray? Always. Good times, bad times. It's required of us to what? Pray. pray. And you can only pray 
if you have faith in God. Because prayer is the highest expression of faith. Now look at verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. You see? You see what God is so interested in? He said, is that a possibility? To find faith. To find people still praying on earth when the Son of Man returns because of the things that will come to the earth. The fear. And the things that the enemy will throw at the children of life. That there is a possibility so many people will lose their faith in God. Will doubt the word of God. Question the word of God. Doubt God. Lose their faith in God. Job didn't. He had twice as much as he had before. David did not doubt God. He had more and became the son. The father of Jesus. The father of Jesus. Son of David. Son of David. They call Jesus the son of David because he didn't lose his faith in God. I don't know where you are. And I don't know what you're dealing with. And I don't know the unanswered questions on your mind. But one thing I know, one thing I know is that God always works it out. God is faithful. God is working even when we don't feel him, when we don't see him. He's working. He neither slumber nor sleeps. And the fact that you don't see him, you don't feel him, you don't hear him, don't mean God is dead. God is not dead. He's alive. Hear me. Delays are not denials. He doesn't come when we want him or need him, but he always comes on time. The three Hebrew young men were thrown into the furnace of fire and Jesus could have interrupted and stopped it before they got in. He didn't do anything. He waited. When they were in the mix of the fire, he stepped in as the fourth man. And that was when the king saw a vision. A hidden king saw a revelation and said, did we not throw three men into the fire? Who is the fourth man as of the son of God? This situation you find yourself in, may I prophesy to you, it will end in a testimony. I'm telling you. Yeah. You know, I was telling them that I preached for 45 years. The greatest gift I ever had in ministry for 45 years didn't come from a Christian. It came from an atheist. An atheist. He said, I watch you. You've convinced me that God is real. And he said, I want to bless you. And the gift he gave me is the biggest since I've been in ministry. It wasn't an unbeliever that gave me that gift. It was an unbeliever. An atheist. Somebody who didn't know anything about Jesus. He said, who is this Jesus? Tell me, explain. Jesus, who is he? And I was telling the church the other day, I said, the reason why you got to love people it's because you never know who God will use to bless you. You see this land where we are, all this land, it wasn't given to me by a Christian. It was given to me by an Alaji, Alaji Abbas, Cuba, of blessed memory. It was Alaji Abbas who gave me this land. He called me on the 24th of December, 30 years ago, and said, Osofo, assalamu alaikum. And I said, Alaji, alaikum salam. And he said, I, I want to show you something. And he said, meet me on that road. And he brought me here. And said, what do you think about this land? I said, good. And he said, I'll talk to President Rawlings. I think you can have it. That is how I got it. It was a Muslim that gave me this land. <clears throat> when, when you sow, when you sow, stop looking for the result to come from the places you want it to come from. God chooses and decides how to bless you, who to use to bless you, and when. It is his choice. Put your hands together and, and thank him. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We subject God to reasoning. We subject God to reasoning. You know, for God, he said, Paul said the other day, he said, when I am weak, then I'm strong. 
That is what God said. God said, from, from my perspective, you are strong when you are weak. And God doesn't see evil as evil. He sees evil as good. That's why he said, all things work together for your good. It doesn't matter what you call it, what happens, good, the bad, and the ugly. I have programmed already before time appointed that anything that comes your way, at the end of the day, it will work for your good. Come on, somebody, put your hands together. Tell somebody, it's working. It's working. It's working. It's working for your good. You see? Hear me? That's why Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God, but God, but God, but God. Somebody say, but, 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 but God, but God. Somebody say, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God turned the evil for good. I declare whatever they have programmed in the womb of 2022 as evil to bring pain and grief, let it turn for good. Put your hands together. Let the evil turn for good. Let it turn. Let every evil turn. Let it turn for good. Let that which is meant for pain, for grief, turn for good. Celebration, good, for good, for good, for good, for good and not for evil, for good. Amen. Hear me. See now, God sees differently. What we call evil means nothing to God. Yeah. God says, you see it as evil. You see it as bad. But it means nothing. It cannot stop my plan. Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, I know the thoughts I have of you. I know the plans I have planned for you. They are plans of good and not of evil. And it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter the adversities that comes your way. It will still not stop my good plans. My plan stands anyway for many, many, many other devices in the hearts of a man towards my people. Nevertheless, my counsel shall stand. The counsel of the Lord will stand no matter what. At the end of it all, it will be in our favor. It will turn in our favor. This week, from today, let the tables turn in our favor. Let circumstances turn in our favor. Let the situation turn in your favor. Somebody say, turn, turn, turn. Turn in my favor. It's turning, it's turning, it's turning. If you believe it's turning, put your hands together and give him praise. Praise him. Praise him. It's turning. It's turning in your favor. It's turning in somebody's favor. Let it turn in favor of our kids. It's turning in favor of our children. It's turning. Hear me. Hear me. You are a finished product. You are not, you are not being perfected. You are, you are already done. You are a finished product. I'm telling you. Because God declares the end from the beginning. Our end is already determined. And between now and then, so many things happen that you and I are ignorant of, but God is not ignorant of it. He has already determined how things will end. And it doesn't matter what's going on right now. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. It will turn in your favor. Our end will be better than our past. Job's latter was better than his past. May the Lord increase you greatly. May the Lord make you stronger and better than your enemies. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say yes. Say yes. Come on, somebody. Say yes. Anyone that has devised your head, anyone that has taken your name and your picture anyway to hurt you, let it backfire in the name of Jesus. Let it backfire in the name of Jesus. And I declare, anyone that will try you by any power, by any means, by any weapon, in the name of Jesus, let them go down. Let them go down. Put your hands up. Let them go down. Let them go down. Let them lose their defenses. Let their tongues be divided. Let there be confusion in their camp who divides our head. In the name of Jesus, say yes. Say yes. Say yes. 
You know, the Bible said in the book of Exodus, they came to the waters of Mara in Exodus chapter 15, verse 23. They came to the waters of Mara. They were thirsty. And the Bible said the waters were bitter. The waters were bitter. And, and, and Moses cried out. And God said, look at, look at that tree by the water. I told an angel in the time of creation to put it there. And in, in that tree is the power and the ability to turn bitter into sweet. I declare, whatever is bitter in your life, whatever has become bitter, bitter marriages, bitter relationships, bitter businesses, anything, any group of people who have said, you, you will taste pepper, you will taste pepper. Any group of people who said your marriage and your situation will be like pepper, like pepper. Today, we turn bitter into sweet. We turn, we turn pepper, pepper into honey, pepper into honey. Put your hands together, declare right now. We turn every bitter situation to sweet and any pepper situation into honey. Honey, 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 honey. Put your hands up. Declare. Declare. Honey for pepper. Sweet for bitter. Sweet for bitter. Honey for pepper. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together. Honey. Honey for pepper. Sweet for bitter. Talu takan. Delay to kalans. Safala kunta wanda. Mayandu kadibasa. Ishandu kawan. Sela kuta dan. Palunda kawahasa, amayakutundu lafa, hey, kulamahan, kudeli katan, kufandi kasan, palakadum masa. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 6.18. Ephesians 6.18. Ephesians 6.18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. Pray every in the now and spirit. then. No. Pray every now and then. No, sir. Pray when you feel good. No, sir. Pray when you are happy. No, sir. Pray when you are excited. No, sir. Pray when you are at peace. But pray always. 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 Pray no matter what. Pray irrespective. You have no choice in the matter. There's no, you have no choice in this matter. There's no alternative. Pray when you feel like praying. Pray when you are up. Pray when you are down. Pray when you are sad. Pray when you are happy. There is no other way. Trust and obey. For there's no other way. No other way to be happy, Jesus, but to trust and obey. When we walk in the Lord, in the light of His word, has a plan A. That's the only way. That's the only way. Go ahead. Ephesians 6.18. Go ahead. Praying always. Praying with all always. prayer. With what? All prayer and supplication. There is still a prayer you haven't prayed. 
Because there was a prayer Job didn't pray. And until he prayed that prayer, his situation remained the same. It was the day he prayed for others that God turned his captivity. Pray for others. Pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those who hurt you. Stop being bitter. Stop being hurt. Stop being offended. You are too offended. Everything hurts you. Everything offends you. Why are you like that? Turn to somebody and say, you cry. Why are you like that? <laughs> that is funny. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Amen? Yeah, go ahead. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Watching thereunto with what? All perseverance. All perseverance. And supplication. And supplication. For all saints. He didn't say for you. He said for others. That's the key. If we will stop praying, only for ourselves and pray for others. If we pray for the children of others, if we care a little bit for others, if we stop being critical of everything and others and pray for others, we'll be better people. Better people. Happier than we've ever been. Amen. You know what? I've given you enough. Oh. Yeah. Let me stop here. Please stand. Please stand. prophesy that we will pass this test. Say, oh my enemy, make no mistake about this situation and about this matter. God will have the last word. Put your hands together if you believe it. Say, oh, my enemy, make no mistake. I will not die prematurely. And I will not bury any of my children prematurely. Say, my children will not be fatherless. Our wives will not be widows. We will not be disadvantaged. Let let the opposite of their expectations occur. Let the opposite of their imaginations occur. Let the opposite of their predictions occur. Come on, put your hands together. Declare the opposite of what they have predicted and what they have declared. Let the opposite occur in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. It will turn in our favor. It's turning in our favor. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. Let, let me make a prophecy. Let me make a prophecy that from right now, every unresolved issue that concerns you and your family is being resolved right now. Let me make another prophecy in the name of Jesus that the, the tables, the unfavorable conditions, the hostile situations, the tables that have been against you, the unfavorable verdicts are turning in your favor right now. If you believe it, put your hands together and command favorable verdicts. Tables are turning. The tables are turning. The tables are turning. The situations are turning in my favor, in the favor of my children, in favor of my family, in favor of this house, in favor of this nation. Let it turn in our favor. Turn in our favor. Turn in our favor. Turn, turn, turn in our favor. 
If you believe it, put your hands together. Let it turn. Let it turn. Let it turn in our favor. It's turning in your favor. It's turning in our favor. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. I don't know what the situation is, but I am making a prophecy and a prediction under the auspices of the right hand of God that from this situation, from this very moment in the realms of the spirit, let it be known in heaven and earth that the tables are turning in our favor. That circumstances are turning in your favor. That the ties are turning in your favor. That you have a favorable medical report. A favorable verdict about any legal judgment or situation. A favorable situation from the bank. From the bank, from the bank, from financial institution, there's a favorable verdict, there's a favorable answer, there's a favorable report coming in the name of Jesus. You have a favorable diagnosis, a favorable diagnosis. The blood result, the hormone result, the result you're expecting, it shall be favorable, favorable, favorable. The next, the next call, the next text, the next email you receive shall be good news. Shall be good news. Put your hands together. Shall be good news if you believe it. Receive good news. Good news. Favorable. Favorable condition. In the name of Jesus. A favorable condition. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare. I declare. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 4. Let every crooked path in your life and in your family be made straight. Let every mountain and hill right now be made plain. Let every valley be exalted. Let the rough places in your life be made smooth. If you believe it, put your hands together. Declare it. Every crooked path made straight. Every valley exalted. Every mountain and hill made plain. Made plain. Made plain. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill shall be brought low shall be brought low every crooked every crooked that which is crooked shall be made straight and the raw places shall be made plain 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 let the raw places be made plain 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 in the name of jesus hear me hear me the bible said faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god he didn't say faith comes by reading he said, faith comes by hearing. I want you to, yourself to hear what is on the screen with your own mouth. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low. Open your mouth and declare it yourself. Go back to Isaiah 40. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 4. Okay, declare it now with your own mouth and as you declare, proclaim it. Put your hands together. Declare it and proclaim it. Say it. Say it with your mouth. Say it with your mouth. Hear it. Say it. Declare that every valley in my life, in the life of my family, my children, my loved ones, shall be exalted. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places plain. Open your mouth. Declare it. Declare it. From today, from today, declare it with your own mouth. Say it, hear it, and let it be done. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Lord will grant you peace and rest on every side. Psalm 94, verse 13. The Lord grant you rest from adversity. The Lord grant this house and this nation rest from the days of adversity. Read it now. That thou mightest give him rest. That thou mightest give him rest from the days of adversity. Receive rest from the days of adversity. Have rest from the days of adversity. You and your family, you and your household, have rest from the days of adversity, from every adversity in the family, in the church, in the country, let there be rest from adversity. Put your hands together, declare it right now, say it with your mouth. Let there be rest from the days of adversity and let the pit be dark for the wicked. 
the wicked. Those who devise our head, let the pit be dug for them. As the Lord gives us rest. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Great in him. Up your right hand. Who yielded his life and atonement for sin? Oh, open the wide gate that opened the way. Everybody sing it now. about you and your family is resolved. Every outstanding unresolved issues are being resolved right now. In the name of Jesus, when you return home, there will be an answer and a miracle waiting for you. If you believe it, put your hands together, shout yes. 